I finally done it. I've managed to finally shell swap my OLED switch, and I'm pretty sure I'm one of the first people on YouTube to do this. We're gonna be swapping out the entire back piece, the kickstand, and the Joy-Cons to get this awesome retro translucent look. So this is a switch I decided on using. This is my personal one that I bought at launch when the original OLED switch came out. Now, don't get me wrong. I thought long and hard about doing this on my already modded OLED switch, but considering that that one already has serious hardware modifications since it's mod chipped, and we're gonna completely disassemble this thing, I thought it'd be best to just stay away for now. But go check out the video on this mod chip one after this. It's really cool. So how are we gonna do this? Well, I managed to get this kit from Extreme Rate that allegedly has everything we need to be able to swap out the shell on this. The design on this OLED switch is much different from the original switch, so we're gonna need some new parts. Inside the box, we'll find everything we need to be able to make this mod possible, including the super transparent back, the kickstand, a free six month warranty in case something breaks, and all the little pieces needed to make the Joy-Con swap, including custom buttons. I'm still not sure which ones I wanna go with here since they send you multiples, triggers, more custom pieces, and some extra screws and pieces in case you accidentally lose them. They also come with some included screwdrivers. Coming from some of their products from over a year ago, this feels like a big step up as they're made out of metal and definitely feel a lot more comfortable to use. And lastly, of course, the Joy-Con housing. I'm gonna be modifying these Joy-Cons in the Switch software too, so keep watching till the end to see that. I use a mouth pad usually because I don't want to scratch up the screen while I move this thing around, and I suggest you do the same thing. Link in the description if you want a fancy pants toolkit like this. It's not necessary, but it has tools that really helps if you're taking apart stuff all the time. Our journey begins, oddly enough, with the new hinges. There's a very tiny Phillips screw on each side of the hinges. You can be kind of rough removing these. Don't worry if you break them. We're going to be replacing them anyways, remember? All right, take it off these plastic covers. We'll expose more screws we got to take off. And now we can remove the kickstand. I was wondering why the switch felt much more premium when I first got it, and now I realize why. The back plate is entirely still plastic, but it's the kickstand that's actually made of metal. How strange. By the way, if at this point you haven't removed your micro SD card, now would be a really good time as it might get decapitated in a moment. All right, what's next? Uh, yeah, okay, two Y triple zero screws on the bottom. There's two more Phillips screws on the bottom. Uh, oh God, why is it staring at me like that? And one more on top. Okay, time to do the rails. We're not exactly removing them, but more just moving them aside. Okay, if you want to further proof that Nintendo's trying to make it harder and harder to repair these things, check this out. This back plate will not fall apart until you do this very tiny step. Okay. You see that tiny little hole under the rail? Yeah, that's a clip. And we gotta stick something in there for it to let go of the back plate so we can remove it. There's literally no way you could have known this if you haven't done this before. This is really, really sneaky of Nintendo. Anybody could have easily missed this and broke something. Anyways, once we get those latches off, we can start sliding around the edges to find some leverage and eventually pop off the back plate. And look, the inside of your OLED switch. All right, we'll get to that in a second, but first we gotta transfer all the old stuff to the new back plate. Let's start with the easy stuff. All right, 
Now we got to remove those air vents at the bottom of the back plate. These we got to transfer over to the new back plate, so just keep these. All right, we're done with this piece. You can throw it away or put it back in its box or something. It doesn't matter. He can't feel pain. Okay, new back plate in. Let's quickly put all this back together. And just like that, the back plate is all done. Awesome. We won't put the kickstand on just yet though. That part goes on last. Now it's finally time to dig into the insides of the handheld. It's gonna start getting a little more tricky, but it's a great opportunity to learn and see what's inside a little handheld machine. Oh, on the topic of handhelds, I finally got a Steam Deck. I know, I know, I'll be making a video on this thing soon, but in the meantime, I've actually been playing a lot of Warn Thunder on this thing, since it's on the top verified on deck list. Oh, and they're also sponsoring this video. War Thunder is an awesome online military vehicle game that spans across planes, helicopters, tanks, and naval fleets, and I've actually been really enjoying it so far. Like, it's actually legit a really fun game. I I'm a big tank kind of guy, so I've been having a blast just playing around the ground battles game mode. Uh, you get these really big, massive, explosive battles that make it really exciting to play. Best part is, it's free. You can play on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox, and of course, on your boy Steam Deck over here. And it's crossplay, so you can play with your buddies no matter what platform they're on. It's got plane stuff, helicopter stuff, tank stuff, battleship stuff, and with constant updates to this game, they're always adding new maps, new vehicles, and a bunch of other stuff. Do us both a favor, uh, mostly because I need more people to play this game with, and click the link in my description to get a free exclusive premium vehicle and a booster for your account. The game is free, so what are you waiting for? Go sign up right now, and thanks to War Thunder for supporting the channel. All right, so we gotta get this bottom piece to match with the rest of the Switch, but it's gonna involve quite a bit of disassembly. I wouldn't blame you if you see this and go, yeah, I think I'm gonna just live with the black bottom, but I'm a bit more comfortable taking things apart. First, we're gonna start by unplugging and rearranging the antennas so we have some room to get to the screws hidden under them. All right, now we gotta unscrew literally every single screw we see, all 300 of them. If it weren't for the fact that they're all the same size, this would have been awful. The cable from earlier was still a little caught. <laughs> All right, we're in. Now this looks a bit overwhelming, but basically we just need to remove the black piece on the left and the green motherboard on the bottom. By the way, this thermal paste is completely reusable, so be careful with it. If you mess it up though, that's okay. I'll link some replacement paste in the description for you. Let's start by unplugging everything. First thing, the battery. With that out of the way, the system is safe to work on now. Now we gotta get this blackboard off. Now, I was wondering why I was struggling to remove this thing. It, it felt like it really didn't want to come off until I realized that sneaky, sneaky Nintendo hit a tiny little screw under this white sticker. Very sneaky Nintendo. So this blackboard houses a couple things like your headphone jack, the cartridge reader, and your SD card. All right, next we gotta get this whole cooling assembly out of there. Remember, this stuff is kind of sticky, so just be careful.
Now I just gotta use this little tool to pry out the cooler part. It's only held in by tape. Oh, again, be careful with this stuff because it's still reusable. Oh, and there's also some on the bottom still, so watch out for that. Okay, now it's time to start taking out all the cables. Some of these cables are really sensitive, so I've come up with some tricks to make sure they come out very safely. Let's start with the big display cable. This is what plugs into the screen, and it is very sensitive. I've already messed one up on another switch. So I'm going to use a trick with tape to get this thing out. Ah, I hate these things sometimes. Seriously, this might look ridiculous, but I'm telling you, if you mess this up, you will need to buy a new screen, and that sucks. Then comes the right Joy-Con rail, just lift up the latch and you can pull it out. Okay, let's move up a bit. Now this connector is special. You don't pull up on any latch, you just pull it straight out and it should come out with no problems. Next comes the fan connector. This one can get a little lost when we lift up the motherboard, so I'm gonna just use some tape to keep it held up. And finally, the last connector, the left Joy-Con rail. Again, this one tends to get lost, so I'm gonna tape it up. Okay, now that everything is unplugged, three screws hold in the motherboard, and two more holding in the charging port. After all the screws are out, this part right here kind of has to be pulled back so it can release the USB-C port. Okay, it's out. We're not gonna move it too much just because we only need to get the two screws down here. I know, this seems like a lot of work just to replace this one tiny strip, but I want the complete look, but I'm curious if everyone else would go this far. What about you? Would you take this apart just to get the job done right or just live with the black bottom bar? Now this new bottom piece doesn't have rubber grips installed, so we gotta put those in. and then just repeat on both sides. All right, it's all done. Now we just have to close it all up and put everything back. I'm gonna plug everything in and then start screwing back in the motherboard. At this point, I wanted to make sure that both the fan, the screen, and the touch were all working properly, you know, just before I close it up. And sure enough, we're good. Okay, let's keep going. Now we can take our newly assembled backplate and close it all up.
All right, we did it. And the best part is we did it without losing any screws. Oh. All right, let's just start getting these hinges ready to get the kickstand back on. Now these things have some resistance. They are really sturdy. All right, both sides are screwed in. Now we just gotta reinforce it a bit. These bottom pieces have sticks on the bottom. Uh, just think of them like little wheels. You kinda just gotta slide them in. And these last top pieces need to be screwed in. And that's it, we're all done. Let's admire our work and make sure the kickstand is still sturdy. Huh, the screen's a little smudgy. This is the same spray that Apple uses to clean their products in their store. I always keep this with me. Uh, link in the description if you want to grab this. It's super cheap. Nice. That's much better. Man, this took long to make, but we're not done yet. But we could stop here. I want the whole look, so I'm going to start on the Joy-Con. Oh boy, I can't wait for another hour of finger number work on these tiny motherboard components. You guys better leave a like if you manage to make it this far. Please, my hands hurt. Let's start with the harder Joy-Con to disassemble, since I apparently hate myself. Let's get our Y triple zero out and take off the four screws on the back. You're gonna flip it open like a book. And now let's switch back to our Phillips screw to unscrew the rest of the stuff. Let's start with the Joy-Con rail. It's just one screw that holds it in. Next, we can pry out the battery. It's only held in with double-sided tape because Nintendo's cheap. It's not even good tape. Three screws hold in the middle piece. Now, when flipping this over, be very careful. This trigger is really short. Just move it out of the way and unplug it as soon as you can. The button that just fell is just the thing you push to release your Joy-Cons, and it's very important that you don't lose this. So I know, you ever watch your own tutorials to remember how to do something? Because uh, I, I don't. <clears throat> Alright, anyways, uh, next thing to come out is the joystick. I already knew that, but you know. At this point, we have enough room to start taking out the motherboard. The little vibration motor is still held on with some tape, so be careful with that. We're gonna take this whole thing and put it to the side. Next comes the buttons and the NFC chip thing, which lets your Joy-Con detect amiibos. And this thing, which you don't wanna lose since this is what keeps dirt and stuff out of your joystick. And finally, the IR blaster, which I think I've seen like a whopping two total games ever use this. Anyways, with all of that out, we've completely gutted the Joy-Con. It no longer has a soul. Now we can get into reinstalling everything in the new housing. Now, Extreme Rate gives you a couple options for buttons, so how about you tell me in the comments which ones you prefer. Here are the stock buttons. Here are the matching transparent buttons. 
And I'd love to show you what the color buttons look like, but it seems Extreme Rate sent me two Y buttons instead of a B button, so I can't really show you. SMH my head, Extreme Rate. I think for now, the stock buttons look the best, so I'm gonna keep those. Alright, let's keep moving. I gotta be honest, I messed up at this point. The screws are supposed to go here, not here. I ended up fixing it later, but after disassembling stuff for a few hours, your head kind of starts to forget things. I'm, I'm sorry. This is my old jam and twist method. Unfortunately, I ended up losing one of the springs on the floor somewhere. But thankfully, Extreme Raid does provide you extras since I assume they expected this to happen. Now pay attention here because this next part is what stumps a lot of people. Because this cable is so short, I've actually found that it's easier to plug it in first, then push in the trigger. It's much easier this way. Here's me fixing my dumb mistake. While we're at it, let's swap out these side buttons. It's important to make sure you don't screw in any screws here too tight. They're not designed to be screwed all the way in. They're meant to be a little bit loose. Remember five years ago when Wolf then tried modding his own Joy-Cons and he said, I also had a hard time getting all the buttons to feel right. Some weren't pressing. Yeah, that's because he was screwing them in too tight. We'll screw in the back piece. Close it up. And we're done. Beautiful. What do you think? Do you like the look? By the way, these shells are still completely usable, so you can swap out your other Joy Cons if you still have a basic red or blue one, or, you know, just give it to a friend. Okay, not bad. Now, we're going to run through this left one quickly since it's a lot less complicated than the right one. Let's see if you can still keep up. I realized at this point that I forgot this set came with matching triggers. I completely forgot about these, but the option is still there if you're into that.
The trigger on this Joy-Con has a much longer wire, so plugging it in first isn't all that necessary. Okay, time to combine everything and screw every- Oh, dang it, I put the screws in the wrong place again, Jesus. And we're done. And it only took us about four minutes according to that YouTube player down there. Check out the detail on this thing. I, I really feel like the transparent look is so much cooler when you've personally handled every single little piece and know exactly what each part does. And there it is. Our OLED switch shell mod is complete and it looks gorgeous. By the way, the game that I'm playing is called Color Jumper. It's a really fun puzzle game that my personal buddy, Ben Burns, made. Uh, go check it out if you're into puzzle games. It's on the eShop store. So the Switch mod looks fantastic, and the mod is almost complete, but we're not quite done yet. If you haven't noticed by now, I'm all about the little details, and I can't help but notice that when you bring up the modded Joy-Cons on the Switch, they still show up as white Joy-Cons. There's actually a way to change this though, and it's really easy. There's an app that you can use on Windows that will let you change your Joy-Con colors to anything you want. This program is essential when doing shell swaps in my opinion. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to give this a shot. And no, it, it won't get you banned on Nintendo. I, I don't know why people say that. We just have to hold the pairing button on the side of your Joy-Con and that'll put it into pairing mode. Go into your Bluetooth settings, pair it with your Joy-Con. Then open up the application and pick the right color. I think this color is pretty spot on. Hit right, and we're done. Now we just repeat the process on the other one. And how cool is that? It now looks accurate on any Switch you play these things on. It's that perfect attention to detail that I like. I'm telling you, this thing looks incredible and I'm really happy with how it came out. I'll leave links to everything that I use in this video down in the description, right by the like button, which I'd really appreciate clicking if you made it this far into the video. I'm telling you, this is gonna look beautiful next to my mod chipped OLED switch, which you should really check out. I did a whole video on all the cool stuff that it can do. Anyways, remember to subscribe and thank you for watching.